Well, I've gone ahead and hit the record button and I think um, we'll start, get started. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's Muskies Mondays event. Um, tonight we're going to be focused on career readiness. And my name is Meg Albrink. I'm the director of first year experience here at Lakeland. And so you'll see me on many of these calls um, through the summer. And hopefully I'll get to meet all of you uh, when we move in later this summer. Um, I've been at Lakeland since 1999. I uh, help support all of our new student orientation programming, whether it's the Muskie Mondays event, fall orientation, um, I also work with our summer bridge program and I'm also on the faculty here. So I've had a, a lot of opportunities to get to know new students and their families and hopefully um, I'll get to meet everybody on this call uh, very soon. And I'm joined tonight uh, by Jess Lambrecht. Jess, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm Jess Lambrecht. I've been with the university going on almost 14 years now. Um, I essentially work with students, families, um, and the rest of our campus community to ensure that our students have opportunities to connect with our area employers for co-ops, internships, and just employment in general, either while they're a student and even post-graduation. So would you mind just starting out by telling us a little bit about all of the different services that are available through the Office of Career Readiness and Cooperative Education? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so very excited to be a part, obviously, of the co-op team. Um, I help supervise the team that will most likely work with the students directly. And so while I have an opportunity to meet with some students, I spend a lot of my time in the office really connecting with employers. Um, but for incoming students, I think there's a couple things that you wanna be most aware of that our office can assist with. So as part of the cooperative education program, which many of you have elected to be a part of, and if you haven't, I encourage you to still think about it as a possible option during your schooling process. Um, and essentially we work with students to help them explore degree options, their major and career path and how your major can lead to a great career. Um, we're blessed to be surrounded in our community with some really phenomenal employers, some big employers that are very global in nature and some very small uh, businesses that are excited to work with our students. Um, but for an incoming student, the things that you're going to want to make note of is um, my team and I, we each teach coursework that um, helps students prepare for the professional workspace. Um, that is a course that many of you will likely be enrolled in this fall, which is called EXP 100 Professional Protocol. And that is a one credit class that is focused on resume writing, interviewing strategies, how to make sure that you're presenting your best self with employers, making sure your social media account and profile is set up um, to represent a, a good outward image, et cetera. Um, we also have a clothing closet on our campus. So for students who are about to enter into a professional environment, we've got access to uh, suit coats and dress shoes and things that you might need um, if you are looking for attire to be able to get into the world of work. Um, on top of it, we also support our students in ensuring that they have on-campus employment opportunities. Definitely in a student's first year, working on campus is, tends to be the most flexible and um, best option for you as you try to navigate a new space. Um, we employ about 250 to 300 students in a variety of our different office spaces, everything from the library to food service to our fitness center to our recruitment and admissions office, but essentially, all of our offices are supported by student staff. And the reason that's important for incoming freshmen is you'll typically work between 10 and 15 hours a week, depending upon your interest and availability um, and flexible work uh, schedule that you might be looking for, whether that be evenings, weekends, daytime, et cetera. And so my team and I work very closely with the on-campus supervisors so that when you're working closely with our office, we can help identify those offices that might work better for you or give you more access to growth opportunities or help you financially whatever that might be, um, we're able to kind of help the students make those connections again, on our physical campus or in our local community. Um, but we're worth you every step of the way. So that's the exciting part is that you're not on your, you don't have to go do it on your own. You've got a support team to help you navigate and make the best choice possible versus just trying to go online, figure it out, right? That can be stressful as an 18 year old when you're coming to a new campus. Oh, Meg, you muted yourself here. <laughs> I did, I did. Just testing you. Testing you. So um, I wanted to be sure that folks knew um, 
Jess is going to be able to share an overview of um, you know, what the office does, just like she did. Um, and if you've already seen the video that her colleagues in the Career Readiness Department have posted, um, feel free to use this time to, ask, to ask some follow up questions um, for the team. So if there's something that you'd like to put in the chat, we'll certainly be monitoring that. Um, if there is something that um, you would like to ask about, given your own interests, you know, by all means, we, we can, uh, this is a great time to take those questions. Um, one of the things that we hope that you'll do uh, and, and that this Muskies Mondays program will provide is both the opportunity for you to review those pre-recorded presentations with your family um, to kind of talk about some of the, the key issues that are of interest um, to you, but then to meet our, our staff with expertise in those areas. And so um, if you haven't had a chance to watch the video yet, that's fine. Um, we certainly encourage you to do so. It's got lots of good content about uh, getting a what, what to expect for the first year in terms of work opportunities and employment. Um, it has important forms that you should be filling out or being prepared to fill out um, for move in. And it also talks about some of the other employers uh, that Jess was referencing, ones that uh, are really great partners for Lakeland and provide a really important opportunities and experiences for our students. So um, I guess I'll, I'll maybe start by just asking, has everybody seen the video? I want to be sure we're kind of giving just some cues as to how deep to go or what folks might um, have already seen. Um, so if, if you've already seen the video, would you mind uh, maybe raising your hand? That'll help us kind of gauge where folks are in terms of whether they have questions or on the video. Okay, so Megan's seen it. Great. If anybody else has seen it, please go ahead and, and if you'll find at the bottom, the reactions tab, you can raise your hand there. Okay, so a couple. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing that with us. So that'll help us kind of gauge how to uh, gear tonight's time with Jess. So Jess, could you tell us, I mean, maybe what, what should students expect? Um, you know, they probably have heard a lot about our cooperative education program. As you noted, some of them have probably already signed up for EXP 100 and professional protocol. What does their first term as a co-op student look like? What are some of the things that they should expect and what are some things that probably would happen later in their time at Lakeland? Yeah, good question, Meg. So I think that, uh, that video does a really good job and kind of going over some key dates and information you're gonna wanna prepare for for the start of the fall semester, because obviously you don't wanna wait to get to campus and then kind of figure out your process or next steps and what you should be doing. Will help you no matter what point in the game you come and work with our office but certainly the more preliminary work or things you can get done before you get to campus you'll be better prepared um in that note mara and megan uh are wonderful team members they're the ones again that you'll probably most uh, students most directly be working with and probably see in the classroom on a more regular basis um but a, a couple of key dates are noted in that video the first one being august the 5th is a really important date to put on your calendar um, we will be offering our on-campus employment fair from 11 to 1 that day. We will facilitate that fair through Handshake. Handshake is a software program um, that is used by over 1,200 colleges around the country, so it gives us great access to um, local and, and obviously large uh, worldwide companies. Um, but for our incoming students, you're going to want to make note that during that time frame, we'll have our first virtual um, on-campus fair. So students will have an opportunity to either talk with departments, um, either one-on-one -on -one in a 10 minute brief interview or interaction, or they'll also be offering what we call group sessions um, where you can just sign up to learn a little bit more about that department um, and where you might possibly want to work. Again, I would start to explore some of those on-campus jobs. Do you wanna be in a quieter space? Do you wanna be working independently? Do you wanna be working on a team? Do you need more weekend hours because you're from out of state and would prefer to stay on campus and catch up then? Whatever that might be. For you, there's certainly a lot of options. Um, and that, that on-campus fair is limited to just our incoming freshmen so that you can have the first opportunity um, to gain access to those positions. 
You should note that, again, most students will work between 10 and 15 hours, a very manageable schedule. Um, and then once you do secure a position, then you'll go ahead and share your academic schedule with the department, and then they can schedule you appropriately. So, so a, lot, a lot of our students will work between classes, you know, a two or three hour shift, and some students will opt for more evening weekend type hours. Uh, most of those positions do as well. Um, note that they pay about $8 an hour. Um, so financially, you're going to want to plan for that. And then through the course of the fall term, obviously those departments are very flexible when it comes to peaks and valleys, when it comes to your academics. During final exam period, maybe you need to scale back because you just need to stay caught up on, on papers and prepare for those um, tests. And for other students, they are already well planned ahead and they can handle picking up a few extra um, work hours. So in that first semester, our goal for our students is to be working at a modest amount, right? So again, anywhere from 10 to 15 hours, whatever it makes you the, put you the most at ease um, without overburdening you when you need to start transitioning into a collegiate environment and being, you know, studious in that way. And probably many of you are athletes as well. So trying to navigate our, your practice schedule and game schedule and how that plays a role into it as well. So we certainly are very conscious about our student schedules and variability that might happen from week to week, depending upon conference season or tournament season, et cetera. So working with your supervisor will be really important. And I also wanna put in one other note that's really um, essential in coming to campus is that you make sure you bring your employment paperwork with you. And what I mean by that is bringing your driver's license, social security card, birth certificate, passport, um, et cetera, to be able to have proof of identification um, and being authorized to work. That's an important part that some of our out-of-state students in particular get caught up in and they forget it in their scramble of packing. And then they can't start until we have actual um, physical proof of those documents. It can't be a photocopy or a text message or a picture from home. It has to be that physical hard copy. So make sure you're bringing that with you to campus. Um, and certainly you can connect with a team member when you do get to campus to take that photo or to get that image that we might need so that mom and dad can take it back with them home if, if you're worried about safety and security of those documents. So, so that you shared a lot there. I'm wondering if I can uh, kind of dig into a couple of those things. I know one thing that we're seeing in Wisconsin for sure, and I'm sure this isn't uh, something that's out there in other regions as well, is that sometimes employers are offering a lot more than $8 an hour for employees. So what might be the benefit of taking one of those $8 an hour on-campus jobs as a new student, as opposed to perhaps some of the appealing but and higher wage jobs that might be available in some of the surrounding employers? Yeah, good question. So I, I really um, encourage students to have conversations with parents um, or, or family members that might be able to give a little bit more perspective on costs and expenses that you might incur in your first year. Certainly our financial aid and educational funding team also does a phenomenal job of helping you develop a budget. That is something that is reviewed in that professional protocol class and you'll actually put a budget together of expenses and earning potential. Um, most of our students, again, do prefer in their first year study to just work on campus uh, because of that flexible nature and really building relationships um, with their peers, with mentors, with supervisors that they really develop trusting, um, you know, it builds that family community that we really strive for um, and our students really appreciate about our campus environment. However, we do know that some students, financial is a concern. Um, and so if that is something that's on your radar or something that you're not certain how it's gonna pan out, I would highly recommend, again, either having a conversation with our financial and educational funding team or um, one of our team members, because we can help you navigate some of those off-campus options as well. I will note that um, many of our employers uh, do offer some very um, interesting or amazing benefits to work for them in a year round capacity. Um, but we work very closely with those employer partners so that again, a student's not overextending themselves um, and you know, taking a third shift job or a job that's really gonna negatively impact their academic schedule. That's an important piece. We will be hosting a virtual fair as well on August the 25th for Sheboygan County based employers employers that we specifically have a relationship with and they understand the variability still of a student's schedule. Um, some of the employers though offer some tuition benefits, again, for year-round employment. So if you already know 
that you're going to be sticking around in the summers or you want to work for one of those employers um, that's going to still offer a flexible schedule off the bat, we will certainly work with you to develop the best option. Um, so I don't, I wouldn't advise that you just go out there on the World Wide Web and start applying for jobs like crazy. Really work closely with a member of my team or I um, to kind of paint a picture of what might those options be so that you don't end up applying for a job that maybe not um, is in support or in alignment with your academic goals as well. And really, I should mention too, Meg, that as a student progresses through their time at Lakeland, our goal is to help them move from a very customer service oriented role or a um, position that's going to just kind of help them develop uh, comfort in working with others or a supervisor. The goal through the co-op program is to really help move students then into a progression, what I call laddering effect of building their skill set so that by the time they're a junior or senior, they're working in industry that's relevant to their career interest. That might be something in a biological lab, that might be something working at the historical society, that might be something in working with a literary journal, uh, a number of examples and scenarios about our students and how they progress towards uh, they're closer to be uh, their career goals, but again, it looks very different for every student. So a blessing for us is that we can really customize a path that makes sense for you, the student. Um, and all that really takes is to send us a message or communicate through the protocol class or to visit us during our hours of availability. And all that can be done virtually or in person. And we certainly even invite our parents to be involved in those conversations to have some assurance about how we help a student best prepare for post-graduation success. So we've talked about applying for jobs. You said there's two fairs. There's an on-campus employment fair, August 5th, and an off-campus employment fair, August 20th, right? 25th. The 25th. 25th. Okay, yes. correction. Yep. I wanted to be sure I was putting that in. There. That's all right. And okay. all of that will be done via handshake. Um, again, so that's an account that students, you'll be getting an email to your Lakeland email account on how to access during the month of, of July. Um, you'll get easy access to that account. Um, it's a lot like your social media accounts. It's very easy to navigate and appealing in that way. And then really what you need to have on file is a resume. And honestly, as an incoming freshman, we're not looking for, you know, the best ever document you've ever put together. We're really just looking for a simple snapshot of your work history um, and clubs activities. Um, and certainly, again, we can give you pointers and there's handouts and materials within Handshake. Um, that you can navigate, but we're not looking for anything super complex or refined, just enough to get you going. And then really in that professional protocol class will help you develop a better working document that will be of more appeal um, to off-campus employers or kind of as you progress through your degree path. Uh, but Handshake is going to be that tool. If you're getting really anxious about it and not sure where to go and you know you registered for classes appropriately, you can always reach out to my team at career at lakeland.edu and say, can you remind me how to get access to that? But again, students, if you're watching your Lakeland email account, I believe we're also duplicate messaging for your personal email accounts as well, um, to get you up and running. But that's where you'll gain your single sign-on to get into our handshake system to be able to participate in those fairs. Um, and don't stress as well. If you can't attend that fair because you're on vacation, you're working during that time at home, we certainly get it. Um, but you'll still be able to at least still identify those supervisors and connect with them via email exchange or set up another time that makes a better sense for you, better schedule availability. So in, can you say a little bit more about what the basic, you, you mentioned a few basic details for a resume, and I'm assuming it would probably be good to have something like that for the first one, the, yes. that virtual on-campus employment fair on August 5th. Correct. What are the uh, what are the basics that you recommend? Name, address, phone yep. number, email, what else should be in that that first very, you know, cursory, uh, rough resume? Yeah, great question. Um, so really your high school involvement is what they're looking for, high school employment. You know, were you participating in, in your high school athletics, um, community service hours, maybe even what your technical skills. So if you're really computer computer savvy and you like doing you know, graphics or web design or whatever have you, if you've taken some of those classes in high school that you wanna make special note of, and then obviously your Lakeland degree program, um, you know, are you an accounting major? Are you a sport management major? Are you undecided? But that also helps a lot of our departments navigate that you might be a better fit for their department or needs than otherwise. 
Um, and you should also note any of your Lakeland involvement. So if you know off the bat, you're gonna be on the football team or you're gonna be playing on the men's soccer team, whatever, make note of that on your resume, even as an anticipated activity, because that also helps our departments balance out so they don't hire all football players and then they don't have you know, team members to wash the dishes at night because they're all in practice. So noting any of your um, anticipated college and events and activities would be helpful. And then it, again, any other employment that you had this last summer or the past two summers, are you working at a local gas station or food service, um, you know, part time retail, whatever, would also be helpful in, in helping departments on campus and off navigate some of those options for you. Great, thank you. So you also mentioned a whole bunch of paperwork. Can you talk through a little bit more? And I know you said that it's okay. So what, what might happen if a student is offered a position at one of these pre-term employments um, and they do wanna make sure that those really important documents stay um, in a secure location, how best should, is there a website that they should look at to be sure that they're bringing the right things? Um, how is their paperwork handled when they come to Lakeland? Um, is it important for them to keep it here if they're going to be moving between different employers? What would you recommend? Yeah, so honestly, and I know there's this level of trust in, in your own student and making sure that they're going to ensure there's security to, to those documents. Um, but as an adult, they need to start to navigate those, especially if they change employers. You know, again, Meg, as you mentioned, if they're starting on campus, but they go off campus, they're going to need those documents again. Um, we're not quite to a space where we can accept those things virtually, but that is our goal, uh, hopefully in the very near future. But in the meantime, um, students should just come prepared to fill out their I-9 and W-4 so that they can notate their social security number and their work authorization. Um, I think it's most easy for our students to bring a passport, but if you don't have that, again, a social security card um, or birth certificate, will, the originals, um, again, will as well. On move-in day, we will have staff available to take, get those documents copied and put into their employment file um, if that's something that mom and dad want to take back home with them. I certainly understand that. So just make sure that they're connecting with an appropriate team member so that they can, can do so if that's of most interest to them um, or to that student. But you will need to come prepared to fill out those documents. And literally, our students can get started the very next day um, uh, as soon as they complete that, those um, documents. Every department understands that you're, our new students will go through an orientation program when they get to campus. They'll have to figure out where their classes are, get their textbooks, all of those things that our new students are gonna have to partake in. So we won't schedule a student during those activities. But certainly a student can get started within the first week of classes very easily. Some of our students though, sometimes take a couple of weeks to transition and just kind of, again, navigate space and figure out where they need to go for what before they'll start working. Well, I'm going to pause here um, and invite our participants. I know I've been asking you a lot of questions, but I want to be sure that the folks who have joined us tonight have a chance to ask. Um, if you'd like to ask, you feel free to just unmute and um, offer up your question for the group. If you're more comfortable raising your hand, we can do that. And if you prefer to put a question in the chat, that's fine too. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, so does anybody have a question that they would like to ask Jess um, this evening, whether it's about, um, you know, coming to campus, looking for a position, figuring out how many hours to work, um, anything there? Well, while folks are thinking, Jess, maybe I, I know you mentioned earlier um, participating in athletics, and I guess I'm wondering how many of our student athletes are also working? Do you have a sense of whether it's easy to juggle um, employment and athletic participation? What have you found? Yeah, most certainly. I mean, obviously, we recognize that a majority of our students or a significant portion of them are in some sort of sport. Some of our students even in two sports. Um, and so the more that a student can convey that to a department or even an off-campus employer is really, really important because we want to ensure that you can do it all. Um, and it is feasible. We very much have students who will you know, be on the football team in the fall season and then and be very conscious of their work hours and maybe pull back a little bit. 
five or six hours a week. It's one of our, our goals is to keep students on a payroll, but even in a very modest amount because they just really need to dedicate more time to studies and athletics. And then postseason, they can then ramp up a little bit further. So in the spring term, maybe they do work more like 15 or 16 hours a week and be able to kind of catch up, if you will. But at no point in time do we want students to just fall off the employment radar because just being on a payroll, or maybe they can pick up casual hours. We even have some students are like, Jess, I don't have to, I don't have as much time to dedicate every week to um, hours. But a lot of times we have off-campus employers and some on-campus ones as well that are like, hey, I need extra help this one weekend. Um, we partner with Acuity. Um, they actually have their employee picnic in September this year, and there's. They ask, you know, can we get 15 students on Friday and 15 students on Saturday? Yep. So we go to town and making sure that our students are aware of some of those short term gigs enough that they might just be able to catch up on some spending cash. Um, again, all very dependent on a student's individual goals and its relatedness to their degree program and their other activities and involvement. Um, but we certainly try to uh, best manage those all of those aspects so that we're not overburdening in any one capacity or, or um, priority in a student's life. I will also mention I work very closely with our athletic coaches. In fact, just this last week, I had a really great conversation with Coach Bruton with the football team, um, talking about a particular employer who is an interest in working with our um, fall athletes where they just work two four hour shifts a week and then Sundays, um, making $20 an hour. So again, we're trying to build schedules with employers that are really well balanced with academics um, and athletics instead of saying, oh, you can't go to practice. That's not good either. We want our students to be able to commit to their team. It gets probably a little bit trickier with sports who have an adjustment of schedule, you know, because of weather conditions. Um, that tends to get a little bit dicier, but we certainly um, can continue to communicate with coaching staff and we talk to students about how to make sure that they are balancing things out that are within reason and communicating with the supervisors or departments or coaching staff if they really have a set schedule or need to flex in a one way or the other. But I would say in all of my years within higher education, our campus is so understanding um, about all the things that the demands that are on students or their expectations for themselves. And we try every way possible to ensure that it's within reason and not going to overextend them. Because sleep is important too, right, Meg? <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. No, I'm a big fan. <laughs> so you know, if a student is working at a place like you mentioned this acuity picnic and it's a short term thing, they're not going to have to go there every day. Um, and maybe they didn't have a car on campus. Um, how easy for would it be for them to get to that location? Maybe they're new to the area. They don't know where it is. They don't have a vehicle. What are some options for a student who gets that kind of um, casual off campus placement? Yeah, for sure. Um, so especially in those bigger weekends where we've got like a group of students, uh, we will also help coordinate transportation with our shuttle services on campus so that all students are going together at the same time um, and returning campus at the same time. But shuttle services are available seven days a week um, from about, I want to say it's six in the morning until late into the evening hours. Uh, but as long as a student is telling our shuttle team what their work hours are, uh, we will make sure that students get to work on time. Um, that's a really important aspect, especially in working with our major employers in the community who, who are on shift work, where a student really has to be there by three o'clock if they clock in late, that's a penalty point, whatever it might be in their particular employer. And so we want to reduce, eliminate that even as a, um, as a hiccup or a possibility of happening. So we make sure that students get to work on time. Um, and then let students get obviously back to campus. I would also mention that if a student works evening hours and needs to use our food service operations and grab a big lunch to go, that's also an available option. If they just mention it to our food service team at, by lunchtime, they can usually have a big lunch available um, or big, big meal to go with them to work if they get their break and need to take it. So lots of flexibility. And really the best piece of advice is to over communicate with all of the teams um, employers, partners involved, whether that be transportation services, food service, um, the employer, my office. But the job, the responsibility of my team and I is to make sure that students know who to be communicating with and how to appropriately advocate for themselves. And then we obviously provide lots of coaching advice so that if a student might have forgotten to tell someone something important, how do they resolve that in a, in a 
an appropriate manner so that we ensure that it doesn't happen again. Um, you know, whether it be an email communication that needs to happen or something, a sit down conversation with a department supervisor, we just want to make sure that students know how to have sometimes a difficult conversation or um, whatever the issue might be, because that will happen. Um, so we do, we cover, cover that all in protocol, but again, on an individual basis, we want to make sure that students know what to do and when to do that. That's great. I think one thing that sometimes I hear um, is that students who do make a mistake in the first term or the first year of school really freak out about it um, because it's hard, right? Nobody feels good when they make a mistake. Um, it, it, but you're still at the same time trying to navigate a new environment, learn new things. It sounds like they're learning some ways to recover um, from the, those mistakes, whether For it's, sure. you know, reaching out to the employer, or whether it's strategizing a plan B. Um, I think that's, that's a really normal part of the process. And it sounds like one that, you know, we, we certainly want folks to, to have the best possible experience, both our employers and our students, but we also understand that there's a lot of new <laughs> happening in that first sure. semester and we'll work with you on that. Yeah, no, I can think, I mean, I was even messaging with a student yesterday who was having an issue on the holiday and said, well, what about this? And who do I tell, you know, and, and sometimes students just don't know who to call and they just, you know, are, are nervous about that or don't know that they, who, who to make contact with sometimes, especially if it's off campus employer. So sure. it's really important that our students, wherever they're working on campus, off campus, that they share that information with us so that we can really be their best advocate to help them strategize whenever that might be or become of need or interest. And I can even think, Meg, I'm sure you've had experiences too with students. I can think of a particular student who was terminated from a position last spring and has had to do some reflection. And honestly, he's probably one of our best employees this summer at a different employer partner because he just had to learn something about his own behaviors and communication style. And now the employer that he's working for I mean, they, they rave about them. So those things happen and we, our team and I are very comfortable with that. And again, helping coach and navigate appropriately so that it's, it's not meant to be a doom and gloom. It's meant to be a support system to help you be better. Well, and you know, as an educational institution, we realize those are sometimes those painful moments are the ones where folks can have the opportunity to learn the most, right? <laughs> For sure, right. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit, when can a student start earning credit for a work experience? You know, that we've been talking about all of the opportunities that are out there, the pros and the cons of the different things that will be out there. We know that we have to apply through Handshake. We know we'll need a resume. We know we'll need employment paperwork. When would a student be eligible to fold some of this work experience into their course schedule and earn credit for it. Yeah, so once a student has completed that uh, foundational course, so that we call it EXP 100, that professional protocol, so certainly trying to get that class in as soon as possible. It's a one credit class. And I like to say it's kind of the prescription, if you will, on how to be a good employer, prepare for a great employment experience, um, because we help you prepare for how to communicate with those departments of supervisors or submit those applications, et cetera. As soon as a student has successfully passed that class, then they can actually earn credit because of work. Um, and the beautiful part about that is when a student does that in their first term of getting work credit, if you will, they can earn a, a variability, excuse me, of credits, right? So they can earn one credit up to 12 credits in a particular term. And then when they do that, they're working um, independently with a faculty instructor who's an understanding, uh, understanding of their work experience and what they might be doing. Um, and the student is doing weekly reflection and guided um, goal setting so that every week they're thinking about what kinds of um, new challenges am I gonna face this week? And where was my success in the last week? And what am I gonna have to work harder at in the next week? So that happens on an individual basis with support of a faculty member. And then on top of it, they take a peer course. Um, and that's a, pro a professional reflection course that every week we're talking about workplace scenarios, we're helping students understand um, how to grow their career, how do they take their career from that entry level um, standpoint into the next level for themselves, how do they, um, and how and when do they appropriately ask for an increase in compensation, um, how and when do they ask for an opportunity to grow as a leader, um, how, did, how do they go about doing that, so that's a peer class um, that's a one credit course as well that coincides with their work experience as well. So 
to answer your question, Meg, spring for most of our students will be the first time they can actually start earning credit. And for our students um, in the co-op program, if they've elected to pick up that minor or an emphasis, um, they can earn up to about uh, 30 credits because of work. And that's a major differentiator between us and our higher education peers, and because that's an important part of a student's growth is being able to understand how are they in the workplace? How do supervisors see them? How do their coworkers see them? And how are they going to be even better? Um, and so there's a lot of additional elements um, in that course sequence that helps the student be that much more prepared for post-graduation success. So for most of our students, the spring term is going to make the most sense. Um, and then the other thing I'll mention too, Meg, is I know you and I have had many conversations about the summer term and what makes sense in the summer months for our students. Most of our freshmen would elect in their first summer to go home because they're usually more comfortable in that first summer. Like I wanna see my high school friends still, I've got family members at home, whatever it is that's kind of um, encouraging them to be back in that home community, which we fully support. Um, but then by the time a student is a sophomore, you may wanna to start to think about um, some of those more competitive pay positions, the things that are gonna offer more uh, heavier tuition benefits. In fact, we, Meg, as you know, we've got a student who's with one of our employers who has, after one year of work, has 80% of his tuition paid for because of his employer. Um, and that can happen for any one of our students who has an interest. They just have to have a work and drive to be able to want to, to do that. Um, but certainly, again, it kind of goes back to your financial goals and career goals and how can we map that out to help a student best navigate from first semester through graduation, what's going to work best for you, for your family, for your finances, for your career. And all of that is a big puzzle for us. And it's so fun to watch a student navigate through um, and kind of have the, uh, as the ideation stage happens and they're trying to figure out, okay, if I have a degree in marketing, what am I gonna do with it? What does that look like or whatever it might be? Um, what how does that go from, that sounds interesting to practicality um, and putting it into play. So it's a, a very cool part about what we do. So it sounds like maybe not the the freshman to sophomore summer, but subsequent summers might be really valuable times to stay on campus and and to work locally um, as opposed to going home. And we can Most certainly, that. and in fact, we've got three employers this summer who've even offered to pay for housing for our students who've opted to stay locally. So we've got about 25 students who are at one of our local hospitality partners, the Ostoff Resort. It's literally about seven miles, I think, from campus. Um, but we have students working in their water sports arena, in their front desk agents and reservations to housekeeping, and they're staying with no cost in living on campus and us providing transportation. Um, it's been a really fun summer seeing those students engage with that particular employer. So it really, it's kind of a, a up to the students, you know, what do you want to do and what do you want to get out of it? I love asking questions, but I don't want to be the <laughs> poor Jess knows this. She's anytime she gets in a meeting with me, I have like 10,000 questions for her. They're so. always good though, Meg. <laughs> They're always good. But well, I, I do you. want to just kind of make one last effort to or one last plug too. Um, right, we are here year round, um, even on holiday weekends, right? I'm messaging with students and as does my team. So if something comes up or you've got to hang up or you've got a question. Uh, we are literally an email away, a phone call away. Parents, if you're on the call tonight, we do um, a couple times throughout the fall semester, we'll do some webinar hosted sessions just to make sure that you're prepared and engaged with us and we're answering your questions as well because we know you have them and want to hear from us. So um, you can anticipate that. Parents, I will also mention we have a newsletter for our parents to make sure that you're aware of some key dates of information and when our major uh, events and fairs are, if we're doing company tours and things that our students might have an interest in, but maybe don't catch all the time because they put a lot on their plate and a lot to think about. Um, but Handshake is the best way to schedule with us for students. Um, again, we meet with students virtually, in office, whatever is easiest for the student, wherever they are. Um, but we are here throughout the course of the summer and we're really preparing every day and making sure students are best suited for success. That's great. All right, so as, as our time winds down, and does anyone else on the call have a question that they'd like to ask Jess? 
I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of you know questions that have stumped me over my years, Meg. <laughs> but I think we've been able to navigate most of them pretty darn well. So we we really my team works tirelessly to make sure that students have opportunities, no matter your degree program, no matter your challenge, no matter the situation. We've sure. seen and heard a lot in our time sure. on the team, and my team is. Uh, Megan's been on our team for maybe we're going on four years now as a professional and Mara has been with the institution for about the same number of years. I mean, we, we've seen it all. And so we welcome any challenge to see how we can help best support students in whatever career path, even if it's not related to a degree program that we offer, how can we supplement and build that puzzle together um, to give a student something that, you know, might be somewhat unique in nature. We've seen a lot in our days, so. Well, that's great. Yeah, the, the years of experience in your office are significant and impressive. So I, I know that that's a great uh, resource for our students and our families, as well as our employers, for sure. And lastly, too, right, we've got, uh, I always have a lot of <laughs> things that I think about along the way, but, you know, even for students who are out of state, if you're also thinking about you want to go home your first summer and wondering what types of employers might be better suited for you, we've got alumni connections all over the country um, that's an important aspect as well. I can even think of um, Ifra Abduwali, who's out in California this summer. She's a Sheboygan resident uh, working for one of our alumni on a glamping campground. Um, so you know, some very cool stuff. So if a student's like, where can I go next? What is my next option? Where can I get some new experience or do something a little different or unique? Um, we definitely can help build um, whatever that might look like for you as well. All right, great. Well, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Um, our next Muskies Monday will be next Monday. Um, same time, same place, we'll use the same link. Um, and in that call, we'll have uh, our residence life and campus safety team. Um, but before we hang up tonight, I see that Susanna's got perhaps a question. Susanna, would you like to ask your question? Yes, but it doesn't pertain to co-op. That's, That's okay. okay. <laughs> Feel free to go ahead if you'd like. Okay. This is my dad. Yes, my dad's going to talk. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so we have a. I have a question that. Um, Sana plays um, volleyball, so her day, her check-in date is the 18th of August, mm -hmm. and um, we are going to bring her up early, obviously, a couple of days. But what we're wondering is if we could see her room. She's staying in Brats. Okay. So if there's anything that she needs for her room before she officially moves in on the 18th, I mean, other than besides like a TV or a refrigerator or whatever, but something like storage units or a, a storage bins or a, 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 a movable hanging shelf or something like that, if we could see the place before we actually, because we can't buy some monster thing and then it's, you know, doesn't fit. We've looked online, but it's kind of hard to tell. Okay. Yeah, I know they have some virtual tours of and and some views of those different rooms. I'm I'm hearing that you'd like even a little bit more detail. Um, the the next Muskies Mondays that we have is with our residence life and campus safety team. Right, so right. what I can even ask is if there's any more detail that they usually provide our families. Um, and so that they can assemble that over the next week and and uh, share it with us, share it with you. I think there is a list on the website for things that are common, um, things that folks bring. Mm -hmm. If you go to the residence life page, there's a freshman FAQ link that has a number of yeah, things to that. bring. Yeah. And then right, sometimes- right. Yeah, we, we did that. Okay, what sometimes happens so is that families will come, they'll they'll get what they have already planned to bring into the room, and then they go to Walmart. <laughs> we do so many Walmart runs <laughs> within the first two weeks of the term where people just try to get right. settled and then to figure out where the gaps might be. And then, you know, 15 minutes down the road, we'll run down to Walmart or to Bed Bath and Beyond to fill in some of those gaps. Right. Okay. So, yeah, because I just I wanted to try to help her get set up as much as I can before we left the next day. Sure. And then it, and then she's on her own. Sure. 
<laughs> sure. Then she then she can go to bed bath and beyond on her own. <laughs> yeah. But she can see the room ahead of time if she wants to raise her bed up a little bit to put storage under there. What kind of um, what kind of block I would need to raise the bed up to okay. put storage, something like that, you know? Yep. Um, I've, I've looked online and we've seen a number of different dorms. Some dorms, um, the whole bed raises up by itself. We've seen those. I don't know if that's what they have now. Uh, I think folks use riser blocks, okay. you know, to, to lift a little bit. Um, students cannot loft their beds, but they can use those riser blocks right. to lift them up. So right. that's certainly where I would start. And I can have the Res Life team give you the dimensions or the ones cool. that really Great. seem to be um, yeah. most popular or you know the best fit for the beds yeah. that we have. Yeah, because if we've got some storage containers, I would like for them to fit with those blocks ahead yeah, of time. Yeah, that would make sense, right? You'd hate oh, right. to have yeah. these and then, and then, and then just not be able to get them in and, there. Yeah, then she can kind of organize herself and be ready to go. You got it. Yeah, we'll work on that for you. Thank you for the question. Perfect. Thank you so much. Of course. Any other questions? Okay. Well, so look on our website. Um, we, if you haven't watched the video, um, please take a look. I think there's some good content in there and definitely a review of some of the things that we talked about this evening. Um, I hope that tomorrow then we'll have the new video out there from campus, uh, I'm sorry, from Residence Life and Campus Safety. Um, and so you can watch that. And then those team members will join us next Monday night at 7 p.m. for the next iteration of our program. So we hope that you have a nice, cool uh, evening. I know it's been pretty warm this weekend in Wisconsin. We're looking forward to a little rain coming through. Um, but we hope you had a, a happy, uh, safe 4th of July and that you have a great week. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And a special thank you to Jess Lambrecht for all your great wisdom and insight. We really appreciate you joining us tonight. You bet. Thank you, Meg. And thank you, everyone, for joining us as well on a holiday weekend of a Monday, if you will. And I'm happy to be here every step of the way. Sounds great. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>